happy dashera vijay dashami or bijoy dashami to all of you on the show this evening we'll explore the multiple traditions and tales in different parts of the country as we celebrate one festival from the royal and grand procession in mysore to the famous effigy of ravan being set ablaze in north india we just witnessed that a few minutes ago from the national capital from the grand immersion of the idols of durga in west bengal to the stunning gulus of chennai fascinating images from across the country on your screens that's our celebration as one country of course as i mentioned just a short while ago we had the famous ravan dahan in the national capital with the prime minister in attendance along with that several uh, political leaders in other ramleela grounds of course the famous mysore dashara procession known for the royal touch with its jumbo savari led by 58 year old abhimanyu as you see on your screens carrying the 750 kg golden howdah came to a close a short while ago as well in mysuru and now we have the illumination of the majestic palace and the city those pictures on your screens of the palace lit up by over a lakh light bulbs and earthen lamps then of course you had the famous burning of the ravan effigy as i mentioned in the national capital prime minister narendra modi congress leader sonia gandhi delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal and the left wing governor of delhi were all in attendance but at different ram leela events in the national capital as you see on your screens of course those celebrations also coming in from new delhi different parts of delhi though the celebrations in kolkata from the immersion of durga idols to the famous sindur kela ceremony in kolkata as durga pujo durga pujo comes to a close uh, the beautiful dancing and the pandals coming to a close there in eastern india then of course in chennai you have the traditional kolu dolls which represent fascinating traditions to modern it as the city celebrates vijayadashmi uh neighboring telangana of course you had the famous batukamma flower festival over the past few days so one country many different traditions and many different tales behind the dashara that's what we will try and explore on the southern view this evening we'll have expert voices from the north south east and west of the country to take us through the many tales that make our dashara in india joining us this evening of course professor chandan gowda who studied culture and society of mysore closely he joins me from bangalore uh also we hope to be joined by professor ns nagaraju department of ancient history and archaeology at the university of mysore amarnath joins us from the from chennai he's part of the famous chennai mailapur trio which uh, are famous for their kolus we'll have special reports from around the country as well uh, so lots of uh, interesting stories hopefully lined up on the show this evening if we can go across first quickly to chandan gowda before i get to north india and all the celebrations there we just concluded a short while ago we'll be playing for you a short sound bite of the prime minister as well in a bit but chandan uh, there's such a fascinating difference between the celebrations and the tales that's told uh, in the different parts of india yeah uh, veera i mean if you just begin with the mysore story here dasara you know uh, the the navratri celebrations are closely tied with royal power and you know we know vijayanagar empire did this on a very big scale we have many travelers accounts of how dasara was celebrated then the navratri festival it was a, an event in political sovereignty in the sense the emperor would insist that all his subordinate kings show up on that day to offer you know ritual uh, subordination to him pay homage etc also sports wrestling was an important part of it also music arts and a display of military mm-hmm. power all of them going together and the worship of uh, you know pampa in the case of uh, you know who's seen as shiva's wife uh, in vijayanagara times it is it's very much a shakta cult practice veera worship of female power mm-hmm. and this is what you see in durga puja clearly and you see a version of that in mysore resurfacing a few centuries down after the wadiyar king breaks free from the vijayanagara empire and is thankful to the local deity chamundi for helping him win the little war and that's when chamundi becomes the mm-hmm. deity of the wadiyars and continues on till today mm. but there's a little bit of a mystery about when chamundi becomes seen as uh, mahishasura mardini uh, which is part of a larger indian uh, puranic imagination Uh, these things are shrouded in mystery but then the things continue and in the way we saw in vijayanagar 
But of course, there are not very many subordinate rulers to show up in the court. But the other things continue: uh, the wrestling, the you know, the arts, the music, and visitors to the court from different parts of the state. And this is a fascinating history about how this also changes in time. Uh, you know, once you have the Mysore Representative Assembly uh, set up in the late 19th century, once the Maharajas get back their power from the British, uh, there are leading farmers and merchants from different parts of Mysore who show up during Dasara to Mysore. And there's another way in which a new sort of, uh, you know, political power community is being put together. These people go back home with tales of Mysore, etc. And another thing that gets added to this right. Dasara uh, festivity, Veera, is the industrial and agricultural exhibition in the early 20th century, where the government also tries to showcase its interest in science and becoming modern, and tries to tell its people that we need to have, uh, you know, embrace new scientific knowledge in veterinary science and agricultural science and industrial production, etc., etc. It, it still continues. Mm. The Dasara exhibition is a part of right. Dasara even now. And, uh, of course, the British also are there uh, on the last day, on Vijayadashmi Day, as part of the uh, you know, court sort of gathering. Uh, there are these changes, okay. but, uh, you know, yeah, this is but, uh, a crucial thing that I forgot to mention, Veera, uh, animal slaughter Sacrifice is a very big part of the Dasara celebrations in in Vijayanagar. Uh, you don't see that as much in Mysore. Mm -hmm. um, and we still don't know why that is the case. And another thing to note, Tipu Sultan and Hyderali ruled Mysore for 40 years, but the Dasara continued the entire time uh, to happen. And the Wadayars okay. who had been displaced from power were still part of the Dasara processions. And then after independence, of course, something else happens. Fascinating. The government becomes involved. Fascin they choose the state guest, etc. Fascinating bits of history there, Chandan. Uh, as always, trust you to bring those uh, bits of history like most of you old Mysoreans who, who were steeped in tradition as far as uh, the Mysore Dashara is concerned. It's interesting that you pointed out about the subtle differences between uh, Dashara celebrations even in one state. Uh, but as we focus on South India, the idea is here to also look at it from a pan-India point of view. I want to go across to Amarnath as far as the Chennai Kolu is concerned because between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu itself, there are differences in the way the tradition is celebrated. But before that, just want to bring in a bit of a North India perspective as well. As I mentioned just now, uh, the setting ablaze of Ravan has concluded in the Ramlila uh, uh, celebrations of the national capital with the Prime Minister as well as Sonia Gandhi as well as uh, Arvind Kejriwal and the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi in attendance at different, uh, different Ramlila celebrations in the national capital. The Prime Minister was at Dwarka in the national capital. There you have it on your screens. Uh, let's just play very quickly uh, a soundbite from the Prime Minister's speech there before we come and juxtapose the narrative that's there in the north of India to the one in the south of India and of course the different narratives even within states. Today we have that we have Ram ka Babbetam Mandir Banta Dek Parahe or Ayodhyaki Ugly Ram no me Ugly Ram no me per Ram Lalake Mandir me Gunja her swar Pure Vishwako her sit Karnevala. रावण का दहन बस एक पुतले का दहन न हो ये दहन हो हर उस वृत विकृति का जिसके कारण समाज का आपसी सौहार्द बिगड़ता है ये दहन हो उन शक्तियों का जो जातिवाद और क्षेत्रवाद के नाम पर मां भारती को बांटने का प्रयास कर and that's the Prime Minister there. Remember, in north of India, it's the Ram versus Ravan battle, especially in Delhi, in Ramlila Maidans. In fact, there are fascinating, interesting tales, Chandan and Amarnath. In some parts of north India, for instance, there is a village in uh, Himachal Pradesh, which is devout uh, uh, believers in Shiva, who believe that Ravana, uh, 
was a devout follower of Shiva, so they don't really celebrate the burning of his effigy. So, so fascinating tales across India. Amarnath, uh, interesting, isn't it? Uh, one festival, many different stories. Tell us your story from Chennai. You're part of that Mailapur trio and the famous Kolus of Chennai, which is, of course, Brahminical, some would say. Uh, Vanakkam Raghav from Tamil Nadu. So I started Vanakkam. And uh, the, as you said, it's one festival, mm -hmm. many stories. I think only next to Diwali, Dashara is celebrated as a national festival all over India in different names. And in Tamil Nadu, it's called Bomma Golu. Golu means display of dolls. Bomma is display of dolls. I think we should have started the Nayakadi uh, later uh, period during the Saraboji second period because Saraboji second was a patron of all art forms of South India and these Tanjavur Bommais are very famous based on center of gravity Talayati Bommai and during his period we have had the Raja Rani Bommais of uh, Poikal Kudai dummy horse dolls I think these this practice of uh, display of dolls should have started few hundred years back. In Tamil Nadu, unlike mm. Karnataka, it's more of people to people contact here. Interpersonal relationship is mm. developed, social, socializing among people. And what we do is in every house, mm. see, as you said, it's not a Brahminical uh, culture at all. Today, every house, almost every house has a Gulu, mm. irrespective of caste and creed. Mm. It's become the order of the day. You may even call it as fashion of the day. And there's a concept of competition too. So people are encouraged to keep gulus. And there are uh, 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 there's a tradition of keeping a guru like, you know, basically three, five, seven, nine, eleven steps to be uh, uh, structured. This is, sh these should be on odd numbers. And there are some basic you know, dolls you, to be you placed. Have ev yeah, every Kolu, you have these new dolls that come into the, uh, you know, come in to make an appearance. What's new this time, Amarnath? This time we have uh, Veda Murtis, four Veda Murtis, Rig Eju Sama Atharvana, Vedas. Mm -hmm. And this year, our, see, this is the 71st year Kolu in our tradition, the Fosa Paran Sumukhi Rashekan's tradition. Though we were not born at that time, uh, this is the 71st year. This year our uh -huh. theme, every year we have a new theme. Uh -huh. This year our theme was Pancha Padi Unjan Gulu. You can see these swings, you know, something very innovative and creative. Generally, uh -huh. you have a stable steps. Uh -huh. Okay. This year okay. we had five okay. Unjals, Julas, in a descending order. Okay? okay. And these five steps, we had displayed a dolls which are a must in a Golu, a Ganesh. Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, okay. Dashavataram, Chetiyar and Chetichi, okay. Marapachi, Bommais. Okay. Earlier, hundreds okay. of years back, only wooden dolls were in O. Oh. Later, it became clay dolls. Okay. Now it's paper mesh, fiber. It goes on like this. Okay. And people okay. visit Interesting. neighboring houses. I wonder, are those, do are those dolls pasted on the uh, on those shaking steps no. or swinging steps? No, no, or no. They are, they, they're doing a fine balancing act. They are doing a fine balancing act. It's placed in such a way, it's like that. My brother is an art director, sister. Okay. We all study okay. in Kalakshetra. So it is our creativity. Okay. All right. So for nine days, the dolls are doing a fine balancing act. They're time to go to sleep, perhaps at the end of the day today. Uh, today, but, today, uh, today. Chandan, yes, yes. Uh, I want to bring the focus. I know, uh, you know, as, as an old Chennaiite, I quite have uh, understood those traditions of Kolu very closely. But, uh, you know, uh, Chandan, going back to the more substantive conversation, and I want to get Amarnath as well in, uh, before we go back into the Mysore Dashara and the different narratives that we see at different parts of India, uh, you know, let me just play for our viewers uh, a quick soundbite of the Maharaja of Mysore, the young Maharaja of Mysore, uh, who my colleague Pratibha Raman spoke to and asked him what the difference has been since the time he saw it as a young child, as a spectator, to now being the Maharaja in Mysore.
Certainly, we don't see ourselves as kings, but rather as a custodian to this uh, legacy. Um, as a child, of course, uh, I don't have very many memories, but they say, of course, we spent uh, all 10 days in the palace. Later on, of course, we would go to Mysore and be in Mysore, at least for the last four days, uh, four to five days of the celebration. Uh, every evening, of course, there was Darbar. Alongside that, uh, on special days such as uh, Kaldratri Day, there were special pujas. Of course, Ayat Puja and uh, Dashmi Day, there are very famous pujas that are covered extensively, uh, all of which we were able to, had the good fortune to see my late father, Sri Shikhandat Narsim Rajwadeer, perform. And uh, it was, of course, at that time we were more involved in the family get-together and uh, seeing all of the uh, all of my peers uh, or my generation, family, cousins, etc., come together and be with them all was, you know, a lot of fun in itself. So it was fun times then and uh, not much of... Yadvir Krishna Dutta Chamaraja Wadayar, the young Maharaja of Mysore there speaking to my colleague uh, Pratibha Raman. But uh, Chandan, really, uh, sometimes I try to understand this difference between the Ram versus Ravan narrative and the woman power narrative in South and East of India. Uh, any, any, any thoughts on that? I mean, you know, how does it evolve in different parts of the uh, country? I mean, I, I suspect there could be a lot of tales in this aspect of it. Uh, may not be concrete historical proof, but what's really the myth you've heard amongst your own uh, people who've studied history closely? Uh, you know, uh, Vaishnavism is known in you know in in my in in, in, in Karnataka. Uh, but the Shaiva presence has been a stronger presence historically. Uh, but the Shakta cult, which is sometime, you know, which is more uh, friendly towards the Shaiva cult, has also been here. You know, after, you know, Assam, Bengal, Karnataka is the only other region in the country where the Shakta cult, where, you, you know, women power is worshipped, is seen. So you may, you may find, so in the case of the Vodayars, Veera, uh, you know, if you slow notice their names, Krishna Raja uh, Vodayar, Jai Cham, you know, they've all become Vaishnavites late on in the 19th century onwards. But the Shakta cult has persisted mm -hmm. in the form of worship of Chamundi. So you, there's no pure, you know, fidelity to one tradition or another. The mixture is what you notice here. Uh, but you're right. Uh, the kind of uh, the celebrations or the killing of Ravana is not at all a very big thing here. Uh, and same in Tamil Nadu, as you know, Kamban Ramayana, you know, he found it very difficult to make... Uh, Ravana the villain because he was a devout Shaivite. So there are these local traditions that will, you know, manage, you know, what sorts of or influence, what kind of festivals we come to embrace, etc. Um, so Rama is not unknown. In fact, you will have, you know, many, many places which will associate themselves with Ramayana. Uh, but at the same time, the kind of festivity that you see in North India where uh, the uh, effigy of Ravana is burnt at the end of the ninth day. Uh, that is something that you don't find here. Um, oh. yeah, in fact, we don't hear that story at all. It's it's quite interesting yeah. that, you know, with east and southern parts of India where the tale is extremely different, whereas it's, it's pronouncedly different. I mean, you know, uh, in the Ram versus Ravan battle as far as North India is concerned, which pretty much comes into the Diwali uh, celebrations in the south of India. We, t we tend to see Diwali most, more in terms of uh, Ram Ram's victory over Ravan. But ultimately, it's a question of good versus evil thing. So it would be interesting. Uh, and I'll let you in on a bit of a secret. We did try getting uh, a historian from North India to try and narrate to us the story of Ram Leela and why it's possibly seen that way and how they see the southern uh, Navratri, unfortunately, they were all busy in the celebrations and couldn't join us at the moment. We'll try and see if we can go across to some at the moment. But just for a moment, focusing on another part of India where it's huge. That's the that's in East India, in Kolkata. My colleague, colleague Saurabh Gupta has this report on the Sindur Kela ceremony there in Kolkata. Let's listen in. After the celebration of Durga Puja, the last ritual where married women put vermilion on each other, praying for the long lives of their partners, is something that is celebrated with great style in Kolkata. It's a ritual that marks the end of Durga Puja, where women go and put Sindur on Ma Durga's idol, and then, of course, put it on each other. It's a celebration. It's a colorful celebration. And, of course, this is the end of Durga Puja as it is. But this visual is uh, what you would say a true celebration of Nari Shakti. 
ये केवल नारी शक्ति की सेलिब्रेशन नहीं है ये अपने अंदर जो शक्ति है नारी पुरुष मिलकर ये पांचों दिन हम जो माँ की पूजा करते हैं ये इसी के अंदर हम यही कोशिश करते हैं कि सद्भावनाओं जागा है और ऐसे ही हमारे आगामी दिन हमारे अगला दुर्गा पूजा तक हर दिन आनंद शुभ चेतना और प्यार के साथ बरकरार रहे यही हम चाहते हैं चला सर लिटिल बेट अबाउट द पूजो यर एंड यू पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द शिदुर खेला ऑल्सो द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ शिदुर खेला इट्स ऑलवेज वेरी वेरी ओवरवेलमिंग काइंड ऑफ फीलिंग वी वेट फॉर दिस रिचुअल एवरी ईयर एट द सेम टाइम वी आर वेरी अपसेट एंड सैड दैट माई इज गोइंग and of course a lot of people take part in this ritual as well i have people who come here uh, you've come here for the first time celebrating durga puja how does it feel so for me as a bihari it's something very new and in a good way of course and it's very exciting it was really fun spending time here during puja and uh, you saw some of the pujos what did you think of them what do you think of the pandals the idols i mean the pandals were fabulous like there was this pandal suruchi sang i was in a awe after seeing it i mean it was very amazing thank you for speaking to us so of course it is a matter of celebration it has a tinge of sadness because ma durga is leaving but at the end of the day sindur khela is happening now and that's how bengal bids goodbye to ma durga with camera person anirudh tripathi in kolkata saurabh gupta and the tv interesting that's from the east of india from kolkata my colleague saurabh gupta there with that report uh, amarnath uh, obviously beyond the kolu there is also the ayudha puja the other kind of celebrations that happens in the south because you know for the working class it's the ayudha puja which is extremely important when offices and factories shut down which is again something that's very distinctively from the south yeah actually the face of golu has changed over the period of time earlier we used to have golus only at home today we have golus in all temples whether it's vaishnavite temple or a saivite temple right. we have the worship of mariamman uh, ambal uh, temples hmm. and uh, taya temples in tamil nadu moreover this hmm. ayudha puja ayudha puja culture it's being uh, hmm. practiced even in banks and companies mm-hmm. and uh, across uh, yeah. uh, tamil nadu in all offices what they do is they do the ayudha puja the previous day mm-hmm. and uh, they close the offices on the uh, day of uh, vijayadashmi and uh, saraswati puja i think god is saraswati yeah. so god not only is a goddess of learning mm-hmm. but she is the okay. uh, 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 she's the goddess of 64 art forms Okay, so that's why we celebrate, uh, we right. uh, we worship her on Saraswati Puja and start the Vidya Arambam on Vijaya Dasami. And in Tamil Nadu, as right. Professor Chandan said, it's a fascinating. Said, on your screens, is, huh. go ahead. Yes, as Professor Chandan said, here there's not a tinge or a bit of story related to Rama and Ravan here. In Mysore, it's Dasera. Right. Yeah, Ma fascinating. Chamundi. Yes. that that is that is that that is a fascinating uh, this one and on your screens is again a fascinating uh, image of india you have two south indian voices speaking over images that are going of ravan's effigy being burning and and talking about the differences that we have as a country chandan of course this shows that there could be no one definition of hindu religion as well or hinduism as well the traits are so different so vastly different in terms of characteristics in the different parts of the country and that's what makes it extremely diverse as a sociologist isn't it absolutely you know i mean this is no is it is so out there it's, it's easy to see uh, hinduism the, the word may suggest that there's something common to everyone but if you look at practices you don't find a single practice that's common to everyone i mean the, the range of variation is enormous right. mind bogglingly enormous even within a community even within a small locality right. even within a neighborhood i mean it's the, and it is to be celebrated i would just yeah. uh, take delight in observing uh, you know how these differences came about and what they tried to hold on to through these things because there are different imaginations that's, behind each that's of these practices fascinating uh, and its creativity
And that's the fascinating, day, Chandan. Yes, that's what best. makes it... That's what makes it a before, fascinating so mystery as well to understand it as a society. And I want to say that population and migration has changed a lot of this as well. My colleague Pratiba went to, went to a Durga Puja Pandal, Pandal in Bengaluru, uh, which if you were to take a drive down the streets of Bengaluru or Chennai today, you see so much of the eastern influence, the northern influence because of people who have migrated, celebrating the festival in their own way. That's possibly what makes us a confluence, a melting pot of cultures in our cities yeah. and perhaps even in our villages. We leave you with the images from Bengaluru's Durga Puja Pandol when the celebrations were coming to a close this evening. Thank you. The festivities continue right since morning. Today being the Dasara special in Bengaluru where I'm stationed right now is the Alsuru Lake where you see the resurgence of uh, Durga idols. In fact, a lot of them who have lined up in trucks to get their Durga idols for the resurgence. We talk about good winning over evil. Ma Durga when it comes to killing the demon and today being celebrated as the victory. Shifting focus to Mysuru, which is also the cultural capital of Karnataka, where to watch the Dasara celebrations there. Lots and lots of people thronging Mysuru today to witness the grand spectacle of not just the Jumbo Savari, which is the grand procession of decorated elephants across the streets of Mysuru, but at this point in time, in the evening, you will also see Mysuru Palace light up with around one lakh bulbs. It is definitely a beauty to watch this because Mysuru Dasara has been one of the traditional celebrations that have been followed for generations together. And this time, after a lull during the COVID, we now see Mysuru springing back to life. With my colleague Nihal Kidwai, Pratibaraman in Bengaluru for NDTV.